and welcome to Gym and Kitchen. I'm your host, Shona. Gym and Kitchen's focus is on creating a healthy lifestyle and I am passionate about educating and coaching real people with busy lives on all things health and wellness related, including the habits and beliefs that govern our food and fitness choices. And that's what this show is all about. You can find Gym and Kitchen on the web, Instagram and Facebook at gymandkitchen.biz. Gym and Kitchen is produced bi-weekly and airs every second Thursday on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Today's episode is really, really special. Today I'm interviewing a gentleman by the name of David Murphy. I discovered Dave on X while doing content for another organization and I was really intrigued by his fitness story and his dedication. Dave grew up mostly in Newfoundland and was raised by parents who were Salvation Army officers, so he was surrounded by charity most of his life. In 1994, he was involved in a stabbing incident which nearly took his life. For almost 25 years after that, he battled PTSD and drank heavily on a regular basis and gained a significant amount of weight. In 2014, when he became a father, he stopped binge drinking in order to become a better dad. But then in 2018, he reached a defining moment. After being asked by his then five-year-old daughter to race home from the playground and having to tell her that he was unable to because of his weight and injuries, he was motivated to make changes. He set on a mission to lose 100 pounds. Boxing became one of the main activities that Dave started participating in to lose weight, and now he trains parents and kids in his hometown. Finally, in 2013, he and his daughter completed their first five-kilometer run together. He says her smile makes it all worth it every tough day. Dave's stories of community and overcoming adversity are incredible, and I'm honored that he was willing to share his fitness journey with me for this show. Please enjoy this wonderful conversation with Dave Murphy. Hi, Dave, and thanks again for hanging out and being on Gym and Kitchen. And I'm really excited to ask you a bunch of questions about your fitness journey and how you got from the opposite of being fit to really fit and to teaching boxing and things like that. Sure. So I'm, uh, I'm super excited about this. So I hope you are too. Uh, I want to start from the beginning. Where, where does the story of Dave and improving his health start? Um, well, it all started in 1994. I was involved in a stabbing incident with three guys and I, uh, they came towards me and I tried to defend myself and obviously failed. Um, so I had 13 stab wounds in me, two severed the muscle in my left leg. So I have half a muscle in my upper left thigh. I had a punctured lung, I had one miss my heart by half an inch and just other minor lacerations. But I was on a couch for about four months, I had to learn how to walk again. And then the PTSD started, I started drinking. Uh, heavily probably five nights a week i'd go to a pub and just get like on my mind drunk um because i didn't know how to escape it and uh, i really didn't want to talk to my family about it so you put on a, a fake smile a sad clown and yeah that was my life for almost 20 years and i put on I probably went from 180 to almost 400 pounds just from the drinking and they're not doing anything and then I found out I was going to be a dad in 2014. So that's when the binge drinking stopped. Um, I still was eating unhealthy and still did things to deal with it. But that's when it, it kind of tapered off. And then when my daughter was almost five, we were at a playground. She just wanted to race home from the park. And because of my leg injuries and almost being 400 pounds, I sad to say, you know, you sweetie, dad, dad can't run. And her little face, her little, you could just see the heartbreak in it, just woke me up. And that was it. I went online. I said, I'm going to lose 100 pounds this year, and I'm going to donate a dollar a pound to my favorite charity. That personally kept me accountable, not just to myself, but to my close friends, family, and the charity. So when I hit that goal and after a year and a half, people match me, like they match my dollar a pound. So I was like essentially just selling my fat. And uh, <laughs> that $100 turned into 1500. And then for a charity that helps veterans and first responders with PTSD called Campraxis, they're a, a horse therapy program. And yeah, so Arlene, from the dragons then matched all of us and then spruce meadows may have seen it on but they donated over twenty-two thousand dollars to them 
-hmm. So my little hundred dollars turned into almost 30 grand in about three years. Wow, Dave, that's, am that's amazing. Uh, I, I have so many questions that just came out of, out of that story. Uh, so you mentioned Canpraxis and, um, and that's the one that you chose to donate to because they've got an, an equine. <laughs> and what's Sorry. your connection to the veteran community? Um, in 2007, I had a friend that was in Afghanistan and uh we talked a couple times a week and he's like man they just opened up a tim hortons there and i'm like what um yeah like in the base in kandahar and uh I said, wow i said are, are you paying for that coffee he's like yeah we pay for it but it goes back into family programs and stuff through the mfrc i'm like well you're not going to pay for it anymore so i went on facebook this is when facebook first i first joined in 2007 started a little page called tim hortons for our troops and uh, this is back when they had the paper gift cards so i said you know what let's get people to write a little note on the back and we'll send them over i didn't want them coming to me directly so i met susan tom from the military resource center in toronto she's like well i'll give you our address people will just send them here and we'll deliver them and uh the first year we sent over a hundred a hundred thousand dollars worth of free coffee oh wow that's fantastic i bet you i had some friends that were deployed between about 2006 and 2009 i knew a lot of people who deployed i bet to at least one of them was the recipient of one of those coffees so that well, is a, for that's a get, wonderful initiative yeah they used to get so much they shared with the british guys and the u.s guys and got them all hooked on timmy's and <laughs> all of a sudden tim horton started open up in the states so who knows what happened there but. I used to feel for a number of years that uh, the Canadian Forces was fueled by Tim Hortons. Yeah, for sure. Some days I think it still is. You know, somebody's always got a Timmy's run or a Mickey D's run or a, or just a monster drink in hand. <laughs> but uh, I feel like it all started with Timmy's for sure. Yeah, and Tim Hortons actually sent me one of the camouflage Kandahar hats. Oh, no way. When they did uh, when they did roll up the rim over there, that was one of the prizes. So it was only a 1,000 made, and at the end, this lady from tdl group found one and sent it over to me and i'm like wow oh that's fantastic what a nice gesture so let's see you've answered some of my questions already but i want to dig into um, a couple of them so you mentioned you mentioned your daughter asking you if, if she could if you could run with her and and you said well you know, sweetie you know daddy can't run and of course that's i've got your book here and that was the the crux for the book which i'm just going to say people should buy this and read it it's a super sweet story and very very heartwarming so it's i really enjoyed it and um, really, really nice story to tell. But was that was that really the main catalyst to get you to to make some changes? Was there anything else that was really the driving force behind? I really need to make some changes. Obviously, well, it's really important because you said when you found out you were going to be a dad, you stopped binge drinking, which is that's amazing. That's a very difficult thing to do. So yeah. to that. I guess the biggest thing was you know, the first, I used to take her to a lot of play centers and like uh, indoor playgrounds and because I used to work four days on, four days off. So we'd spend a lot of time there. And she'd want me to follow her, and I couldn't because it would either hurt my back or my leg. So I used to sit on the couch, and I could see her looking at looking at other parents, you know, following their kids and playing with them. And I'd try, and then I'd be sore for an hour. But the first time I recorded it, and I actually have it on a, one of my reels somewhere, but I followed her up the slide. And then when I got to the top and her smile, when she saw I was going to go down the slide with her, man, just every every day I didn't want to go to the gym or every workout where I was like feeling like crap the next day, like that made it all worth every second right there. And, Isn't that uh, wonderful? Yeah. What a powerful motivator. Yeah. And she keeps me accountable. Like she works out with me. We go boxing together. I have a boxing gym in my basement. We train together. I teach her self defense. Some of her friends from school have come and learned some self-defense techniques you know just in case anyone ever tries to shove them in a car they know what to do um, i'm in a little town so probably not the biggest worry here but it can happen anywhere right it's going so. happen anywhere absolutely and and knowing even just how to be self-confident and strong and recognizing a situation like that is is really important now you've mentioned that you teach boxing to kids as well um could you can you tell us a little bit more about that i haven't been doing it lately but i did have a mom reached out to me and her her 12 year old daughter was being bullied at school. And she said, I hear you teach boxing. She's like, how much? I'm like, nothing. I have a daughter. Let me just work with, let me do time with her. And then just, you can refer me to people. So we did, uh, 
we did 10 sessions together. She was a bigger girl, so she was being bullied because of her weight, which is something I can relate to because it happened to me at gyms and stuff. So I did 10 little sessions with her, and this bully came up to her at school and said, we're going to fight. And she's like, okay. And uh, <laughs> and did the bully run off? Because that's often what happens. Well, no, she tried to grab her, and she did the defensive move back. And then she tried to hook her, and she blocked it away. And she just grabbed her shoulders and said, this is where you stop messing with me she hasn't had a problem since good for her just a little bit of confidence was all it gave her i bet a few skills to, to defend yourself i want to shift gears a little bit with a couple of questions about your fitness in general did you hire a trainer or coach to get you started was it or was it all self i want to say self, self-taught that's not quite the right wording for it but um did you have somebody helping you out or did you find some information on the internet because i know there's plenty of great information out there where did you get your information from and what did you use to get yourself started from a fitness standpoint so for the first year when i lost i lost 100 pounds on my own and i just started going to the gym three times a week uh, every week i'd up like instead of doing a treadmill for half an hour i do treadmill for 40 minutes but on like a 4.0 incline just little gradual things. I had a close friend of mine. Uh, he was a trainer at a big box gym. So he would come with me, you know, once every couple of weeks and just show me a few things. I'd just watch him. So I learned a lot on my own. And then, so this is where it gets cool. The first time I went to one of the big box gyms in Calgary, when I was really, really, really huge, there was two guys behind me on ellipticals. I was on a treadmill and I heard one of them, I heard them laughing and it could have been in my mind at first, but when you're that self-conscious, you start to imagine things too. But one of the guys said, oh, my God, look at the back of his neck. Like, it looks like a pack of sausages. And uh, the other guy was like, yeah, you know, I hope they reinforce the treadmills today. I mean, that could, that stung. Like, I didn't go. I didn't do anything for six months. I kind of gave up. Anyways, when I hit my 100-pound goal, I went online on a page called Calgary Roast and Toast. And I just posted a message that said to those two guys, thank you for the motivation so i used it to fuel my fire and, and then a boxing gym in calgary the owners reached out to me south pop boxing gym and uh, they said you know what come down here check us out we're a family so i walk into this place scared out of my mind it's like a pro boxing gym there's golden glove boxers everywhere and steve claggett he goes by the dragon got like five titles um he's the current ranks of, like top 10 in canada he just comes over to me and says, you know what? You got this champ. And he called me a champ. He never knew me. He never knew my story. And we've been really close friends ever since. He's kind of like my boxing mentor. But uh, this gym gave me a year uh, free membership, unlimited training. And they got me hooked on boxing. Like it was so much so I got this tattoo on my arm. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. it's, the, it's the Grim Reaper handing me boxing gloves, which is kind of their logo. It's kind of like my second chance because it's like i don't know and everyone's like oh you're gonna hurt yourself you know you're too old for boxing i was 44 when i started i'm 48 now and at one point i was doing six boxing circuits a week like 90 minute circuits and it was even on this bum leg like uh, there was one trainer there who one it was like it was 12 sessions right like 12 stations and one of them was running on a treadmill for three minutes straight and i looked at her and said i i can't run and she's like just do it and i did it and you know, I can run now for like maybe half a kilometer at a time. And then I walk and I run and walk and run and walk. They were just incredible there. That's wonderful. What a nice thing to do. And and what a way to make you feel included. Yeah. And and get hooked on boxing, which mm -hmm. I've been told by many people is a really, really enjoyable sport. You know, when, if I, whenever I see someone, if they post on Twitter or Instagram that today is their day one, I'll just comment and repost it and say, you got this champ just because I know what that stuck in my mind that you know it, it's, it's contagious it's someone you know a lot of people get uh ripped apart or tear down online but someone just to say something like that you never know what kind of impression it could stay with someone so. it, it's really true the the power of just a few encouraging words in many ways especially from somebody you don't know can yeah. really can really feel you forward so what a great thing and and now of course he's become a friend and a mentor to you so that's that's like just incredible now what does your fitness and nutrition look like on, on kind of i don't want to say a daily basis because i know that's a, a broad range but just on, i want to say on a regular basis what does it typically look like well you know what i don't weigh myself anymore i just go by how clothes are fitting and because i'm up and down up and down i just don't care anymore 
but I'd gone from a size 46 pants to 32, an XXXL jersey to this shirt is size large. But I basically get up, I have a good breakfast, usually eggs and a, lo- a slice of toast, a lunch, some sort of usually a stir fry or something left over, and then just the normal supper. And my big weakness used to be snacking late at night, watching movies, eating Doritos. I used to watch the TV show The Biggest Loser and order like a family meal from KFC and eat it myself. Now I snack on like those green snack peas. And now with my, my me and my daughter, once every two weeks, we'll have a cheat night where we'll have Doritos and whatever she wants. Like, you know, you got to You can't. You can't uh, torture yourself. I know oh, you got You got to have those moments now and then. I'm I am yeah. in full support of being being really good with your nutrition 90% of the time and then going to the wedding buffet and eating the whole thing because I know that's what I'm going to do. A couple of years ago, a couple of friends got married and both had Ukrainian backgrounds and they were homemade pierogies at those weddings. And I think I ate three plates at one of them and I did not regret a single bit of that. It was delicious. (laughs) So Next week is Easter and I'm going to see my parents in Ontario and I'm going to enjoy my mom's cooking for a week. Like I'm not going to worry about the, you know, you pick it up when you get back and it's, Absolutely. Uh, and it'll, it'll be wonderful and then you'll enjoy it. And that's, oh, yeah. and that's, I think you said some really smart things in there where you don't weigh yourself. You just go by how the clothes fit. And I, I know that I often try and impress on people about worry less about the number on the scale yeah. and more about how you feel mm-hmm. because the latter in many ways is important and the rest will come along. If you're, if you're doing the right things, and making steps in the right direction, then the weight will come along. And, you know, are you going to be 10% body fat, super, super ripped? Maybe not, but do you feel great? And can you do the things you like? Then that's what's really important. Exactly. Um, Like I walk, I work from home. So my office is upstairs. So I used to do 12 steps and I'd be out of breath for two minutes, but now it doesn't even phase me. So just little things like that, right? I'm up and down the stairs all day. I have a lab that's pretty needy when I'm working from home. (laughs) <laughs> so I'm up. I, I did it. I calculated it. every three days. I do the equivalent of the CN Tower just from working from home. I bet you do up and down the stairs. Right. Well, you know those pets can really just be the uh, the slave drivers, right? Yeah. <laughs> As mine is meowing in the background, telling me that he's wasting away. Do you have any exercise gear or supplements that you use and that you swear by? That the, the kind of things that you recommend to other people, like, hey, I've been trying this and it's really great. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. I'm just curious if there's something like that that you use. I don't. I just have a. A giant water bottle with a marker on it that I drink every day. That's a good enough piece of gear. I think that's an important one. Lots of people yeah. don't have enough water. <laughs> Buy yourself a fun water bottle and then you'll drink more water, right? My big motivator is right here behind me. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'll show you. So this was painted. It's lightning hitting mm-hmm. tulip. So that painting was painted by the one of the paramedics that saved my life. It took me 29 years to find her. I had almost given up and I went on Twitter and I was like, this is my last attempt. This is the date. This is what happened. If anyone knows anyone that might've been a paramedic at that time, please let me know. And it went viral and ended up on like all the CTVs and CBCs and her sister reached out to me and she's like, listen, and that date in 94, there was only 2% of paramedics in Ottawa that were women. And my sister was the only one on duty that night. I had a Facebook chat with her and she showed me the picture of herself in her uniform from that year. And my jaw just hit the floor because I'll never forget her face. It was, you know, just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And so she did this painting, she sent it to me. And whenever I'm having a crappy day, I'll just come and stop and look at it and kind of tap it like a football player would when he walks out of a locker room or a hockey room. And just, you know, it uh, keeps me motivated. I'm amazed that you were able to find her after 29 years. Yeah, it was That's incredible. Wasn't easy. No, but what, what an incredible, what an incredible series of events to have that happen. I feel yeah. like you have a lot of those that like you just, you've shown up in the world and been really authentic and people have said, I'm going to help you out. That's a gift that a lot of people don't have. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I want to just, pivot back to something from the beginning of our chat, getting PTSD from being stabbed multiple times and recovering from that. What did you do to deal with your with your PTSD? Any particular strategies going forward? Any tips for people who have experienced PTSD or who are suffering from it for a variety of reasons and ways that they might help manage it? Because I know that it can be mm-hmm. very, very difficult for some people. I, uh, I didn't know what to do with it for almost from the age of 18 to about 35. Because the guys that stabbed me, they were, they were Somalian. So whenever I would see anyone that looked like them, I would, if I was on a train, I'd have to get off. If I was on a public transit, I'd have to get off. I was walking down the street and I'd see them coming towards me across the street. And then my ex-wife was 
seven months pregnant, we had to move. And these three Somalian guys come out of the apartment and they're starting to walk towards me. And I'm like, I back up a bit. So I was doing this myself. I couldn't, it was a sudden move. I didn't really get anyone to help me. And uh, one of the guys looked at me, he's like, do you want some help? And these three guys, they helped me move for three hours up and down four flights of stairs. And that was my, you know what? It's time to go talk to someone about this because that was kind of my big wake up call. I didn't really talk about that much online before just because, you know, I'm so, you know, with the whole, oh, that's your, you were such a racist for 20 years. And like, listen, it wouldn't matter to me if, if the guy looked like uh, a leprechaun. You know, I know time I see anyone that looks like a leprechaun, it, it's going to be in my head. They're going to stab me. But that was my big wake up call. You can't tire one, like three people in a whole it's a big lesson. Thank you for sharing about that because I know that can be a hard thing to talk about. And I'm really glad that you were able to recognize what the link was between the, the trigger and, and what was going on and recognize that it was time to get help. You know, one of my really close military friends, he did uh, like seven tours in Afghanistan. We used to send them over care packages to the FOB units. And one of my coworkers used to make them vacuum seal brownies. They were the biggest hit. But he said to me, because he had bad PTSD too, and he said to me, just because the past taps you on the sh shoulder doesn't mean you have to turn around and look. And that was just one of the coolest things I've ever heard in my life. And that stuck with me too. So that's a great quote. Yeah. That's a great quote. I might I might steal that if it if does. you're okay with that. That is a wonderful quote. I had a number of friends who deployed, and I saw many of them come back very, very broken men and women and spend a lot of time trying to untangle themselves. And my heart just goes out to them because I know it's very difficult. And some of them still wanted to go back. They saw their duty, that it was something that was really going to help them out. I know that it's something that many of them have spent years trying to untangle. So thank you again for sharing that part of your life. Now, we're going to come back to this wonderful, adorable book here. And it's got these illustrations in it are so beautiful that was that were done. I just, I just honestly... I just love these. I think they're so well done. Now, tell me a bit about why you wrote this book and who you want to read it. Okay, well, my closest friend in town out here, I live in a little town of 3,800 people, and I met him through my daughter. His daughter and my daughter are like best friends at school, so we started talking. I've never had a friend that like checks in on me every day. Like, I don't have to chase a friendship, so it's pretty rare when you're, when you're older. I don't know, you just don't seem to care anymore. And there's no time for chasing. But yeah, so he messaged me and he's like, well, Dave, he's like, there's this river, high river marathon coming up and there's a 5k and I just signed me, you and your daughter up for it. And um, we did it. We both finished. Well, she beat me by half a second, but it took us 42 minutes for five kilometers with the stops and the brakes, which is pretty good, I think. That's great. So we were just sitting down. There was some story on the news about children, some children's author, me and my daughter were here and she's like, dad we should write a children's book about our race. And I'm like, wow, that's an awesome idea. So I started putting together the words, just like with our little story and trying to make it kid friendly and not too many big words, but I posted on my little community page. I'm like, hey, can anyone out there draw any cartoonists in town? And uh, this woman messaged me. She actually lives two houses down from me. Her daughter is 15 years old. She's saving up for her college. Um, she's like, she'll do your drawings. Just send her the words and what you want. And I mean, this book is only, we only get, we get $4 a book from everyone that sells on Amazon, put aside $2 into my daughter and $2 into her education funds. So, I mean, there's nothing, nothing coming to me. It's only, it's, it's a $15 book. Amazon prints it, glues it, ships it and takes care of everything. We just, we lose like $10 a book. I'd want it to do $2 a month to charity. Um, but with that amount only coming to us, it's kind of hard. And so I'd put that on hold on this some viral someone with a lot of reach reposts we'll, we'll see what happens <laughs> well you never know right all it takes is one person to um to take a look and and see it and say i'm gonna and who's got a whole bunch of followers to have it to have it go viral as you know the coolest story so far from the book was this guy messaged me he was a u.s navy veteran uh, he was almost 450 pounds and his doctor told him do you want to walk your two daughters down the aisle or do you want them to be carrying you down the aisle in a coffin? The same month that me and my daughter did our 5K, somewhere in the States, he did his first 5K with his two daughters. So he said, when I was reading your book, it was like, I was reading my own life story. And me and him, we talk every day. And now we're like online friends. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's, who that's, else would you want to read the book? Anyone. Um, moms, dads, families, kids. There's someone in your life 
or in someone's life that's you're concerned about their health you know even if they have kids or if they don't have kids just send them the book and say hey just read this guy's story it might you know then there's no pressure right it's a very uncomfortable conversation to have but you can only hope to uh, maybe motivate someone but well and sometimes somebody else's words motivate better like if i'm talking to a friend i can say something until i'm blue in the face but sometimes that external force is part of it this, this is my cat maestro <laughs> <laughs> he makes a cameo in a lot of my videos. <laughs> yes. and, uh, oh, there we go. Oh, hi. That's the, that's the other house manager, right? Yeah. <laughs> is there is there anything else that you'd like to mention? As we, I'm sort of um, wrapping up with my questions here. So, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, that you'd like to talk about regarding fitness, health, making big changes? Um, on the last page of that book. If you wanted to show it, there's that blank page called the goal page. And I remember this page. Yeah. So that's, that's my hope with this. So if I'm a mom or a dad or their kids are reading this together, you write a goal on there and say, listen, it might have to be weight loss. It could be every Sunday is no electronics day or every Friday is board game day or we just go do something. You put that goal in there together. And then you pick the book back up in six months and say, hey, how are we doing with this? Like, do we need to work harder? Is Are we doing amazing? Like me and my daughter, every Friday when she comes, we have no electronics night uh, unless there's a lease game on. But then we've been there. <laughs> then that is worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. But yeah, just little things like that. And like, you know, we'll take the dog for a couple of walks and you got to keep your head up because like she's turning 10 in July and some people walk around with their heads down and their phone just in a whole different world but uh you know i don't think i'm perfect but i do like to keep my head up and try and enjoy every moment as i can so that's great advice now do you have anything coming up in the future for a fitness activity with your daughter or by yourself um no i've signed, we're gonna sign up to do the run again because it's a yearly thing which run is that uh it's the high river run it's for families oh, okay. oh, it's for families with kids with special needs. Yeah, so we're going to do that again, and she's not going to win next year. And I let her win this time. <laughs> I see a little friendly competition going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a ton of fun. Finally, is there anything that you could tell people watching to inspire them to change their lives the way you did, if that's something they're trying to do? You know what? I had about 15 day ones. So if you try it and fail, just shake it off maybe take a couple weeks off try again and um you need to get it up here first if you if you want to write it down say i'm gonna do this by this date if you're comfortable posting it on your social media say i'm gonna lose say 50 pounds this year donate a dollar a pound to my favorite charity say who would like to match me i'm selling my fat and then you know if you're comfortable doing that but even just that own to your personal stuff without the online thing it'll keep you accountable um, I know when days when I didn't want to go work out, when I used to not like working out, which I love, I think about who the people of charity helped and, you know, if that hundred dollars might pay for a meal for a family that comes together or just some, it keeps you accountable and uh, yeah, probably the best decision I ever made. Fantastic. Family is really important to you. I can tell yeah. family and charity and helping other people. And that's Dave, that's a gift. Lots of people don't have that at all. So well, that's why I love when, can praxis runs this program of course they bring the veteran or the first responder or whoever but they bring their spouse and they go through the program with them so they know how to deal with someone that's dealing with ptsd you know the families included which is probably the most unique part of it well and the horses the horses are amazing horses are incredible creatures absolutely incredible i have a couple that live because i live in front of a farm that faces east and there's all there's four houses out there so some days i'll just go and have conversations with them maybe once a week when i'm walking my dog or if i'm not, I'm not walking my, i'll just stop and talk to them i call them names and it might look crazy but i don't care i totally talk to horses they're beautiful creatures <laughs> they're absolutely beautiful so dave thanks so much for for sharing your stories and for taking the time to meet online with me and agreeing to be interviewed by this girl you didn't know who was like hey I saw your story on Twitter and I'm kind of interested. <laughs> Would you be interested in being on my little YouTube show? So thank you so much for this. I, I really, really appreciate it. No and, problem. Uh, and I'll let you know when everything's ready to go. Perfect.
Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed listening to that episode as much as I enjoyed recording it. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to share this episode with a friend. Plus, remember to connect with Jim and Kitchen on the web, Instagram, and Facebook at jimandkitchen.biz. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.